Welcome back everybody. Um, today, Selena's kicked me out of the house for a while so she can prepare for New Year's Eve, so we've just got Tony for Down Under Cruising and Travel. Now what you're looking at on the screen at the moment, yeah, if we come straight across the road from there, you've just come off Smith Street and you're heading to Broadwater Parklands. Now this is the nearest bit of parking, you go straight in. Now, let's walk across the road here. Now I must say, it is pay parking and the meters are all over the place. Um, at the moment, one of the big attractions is the Big Wedgie at 18.2 meters tall. It's the largest inflatable water slide in the Southern Hemisphere. Now we'll just cruise up to the fence here. Now you do need to pay for your tickets and book them online before you attend it. So just look up the Big Wedgie on Google and the details are on there. Unfortunately it wasn't open when I was here so I just had to look over the fence. I was a little bit too early. There's a quick look at the steps up the back of it. Sort of climb in there and paddle your way all the way to the top. Down you go. Okay, now it really is really quite a large car park that's up the top end there. Over behind the trees, directly over the top of that red car, is the Broadwater Caravan and Camping Park. Let's swing around the other way some of the boat trailers that are already parked there and we'll head off straight down to the end down here and I'll show you the boat ramp You can see some of the cabins at the back of the caravan and holiday park. Beautiful day out in the broad water here today. Boats, jet skis, everywhere. People swimming. Now unfortunately this episode is a little bit longer than normal due to the sheer size of the Broadwater Parklands. But if you like the content we're bringing, please give us a like, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. That way you'll be kept up to date with every time we release something new. Many thanks. Now it was right about now that I got buzzed by a drone. He's right in the centre of the screen between those two white clouds. Oh, down he goes. I was looking at him and he was looking at me. <laughs> Good on him, I'd love to have one myself. Maybe one day. Also plenty of options if you want to go fishing. Catch whiting, broom, flathead, the right time of the season you might catch the odd dewfish, trevally. It's got to be in the right place at the right time for those. Now we're just about coming up to the five million dollar Broadwater Parkland star attraction that's just opened. 
Uh, spans 5,000 square metres, includes four lentil spiral tower and various other pieces of play equipment. Now this is only just opened in November, I believe it was. Pretty spectacular little area. Certainly very, very popular. If you feel like a nice coffee, you have the Mug and Bean coffee cart. Now they're open from 6am through till 3pm I believe on most weekends. Pretty reasonably priced too by looking at this chart. Okay, we'll head off around the corner a little bit more, looking at the back of the big wedgie. Beautiful little lagoon, it's a pity that the tide's out, otherwise you get the full effect of the water everywhere. Plenty of places to take your dog for a walk, they just do have to be on a leash. Now this is the map of the area. Where the little blue bit is just above the left hand red leg, that's where we are at the present time. And we're going to go all the way down to the far end. All the way down there. Anyway, let's carry on. Now this is the Northern Pavilion, which can be hired out by clubs for club meetings. Um, you can have small functions there. It's actually quite cheap too. And just out in the front of it, if I pan around, there's plenty of barbecue tables. Now the barbecue tables and the barbecues themselves are spread right from one end of the broad water to the other. Barbecues are gas powered and they're free. All the council asks is that you leave them tidy when they're finished. I'll try and zoom on in the instructions. There we go, that's a bit better. Real welcome addition from the council. If we head on down this way just a little bit more, you'll see a beautiful little restored church. Now this was more like a museum piece a couple of years ago, and now it's fully operational again. So if you want to get married, and you want to get it done on the beautiful Broadwater, come on down and book your service. Oh, just another thought. You see the toilet sign on the pole there? You need those? They're just right in there. Always handy to know where they are. Anyway, we shall carry on further down the path. As you can see, it's a beautifully restored little church. Or should I say a chapel? The bait and tackle shop that's been here nearly as long as the Broadwater Parklands. It was up for sale just before COVID, but I don't know whether it's sold or not. And around to the left, you can hire boats, you can go on trips, all sorts of things from there. 
I'll get a close up of the sign. There we go. Book your adventures here while watching swimming. There's even houseboats that you can hire. Anyway, back up the ramp. And we'll keep heading south. Every now and then you'll find one of these little offshoot pathways. This one is to do with mangrove um, conservation. And if you take this little right turn up here and go into the shelter, it explains it all in a big chart on the wall. This whole area has been reclaimed. There's new native birds, there's more native plants. It's an amazing little area. Here's all the general information about it there grasses, everything, it's all coming back. I won't do a full run through on that area down further down the pathway because it's been raining and it's a little bit flooded. Okay, so directly ahead of us right now, that is the second entrance to the car parks. It's about 100 metres south of where you came off Smith Street. Now that's actually the car park at the front of the swimming pool. Now this swimming pool was built for the Commonwealth Games when they were held recently on the Gold Coast. I'll we'll zoom up here and have a look over the fence. Now you can keep on going past the front of that um, and around the corner and there's another big car park in behind which is in the central park. I'll show you a little bit of that later. Back down onto the pathway. Now if you're into Outrigger Canoeing, this is the um, Gold Coast Outrigger Canoeing Club. They're always looking for new members. Quite often see them out on the broad water, sculling up and down. As you can see, people use it for skateboarding, bike riding. Now this is Cafe Catalina. It opens at 6.45 in the morning. And if you do want to come for breakfast, I do advise you to find the number online and ring and make a booking. Because otherwise you will not get a table. It is extremely popular. Okay, we're coming down to where the, the central car parking area is. Now that's a bit of a play area in there. A few kids in there, so I'll keep away from that. We're also coming down to the main jetty where the hop on hop off ferry comes in. Now this is this water splash area. Again, I won't film too much of that. Give them their privacy. Okay, actually it's well, well timed because here's the hop on hop off ferry just coming into the jetty now. Here's all your stops. Timetable, northbound from Surface Paradise to SeaWorld. Southbound from SeaWorld to Surface Paradise. Your ticketing. One day pass for adult, $30. It lasts you all day. And single and return tickets.
I must admit. He didn't seem to be spinning it around too much today. I've seen them on other days where they've completely done a 360 and kept on going. Here's the hop on hop off ferry chasing them out. Another thing you can do is you can hire segways. I just happened to time it perfectly when there's a segway tour coming through. Say hi everyone. Okay, heading from the jetty up towards the shack attack or snack snack attack, I'm not too sure of the exact name of it, the fish and chip shop. I won't pan hard around to the right because that's the entrance into the kiddies splash play area. Now if I just keep on going around the corner here, past the portaloos are setting up for the New Year's Eve fireworks. This is the central car park which is on the southern end of the, the um, swimming pool. If you need toilets, they're just in there along the side of that building. And just around the corner here to the right on the end of the building there's a coffee and snack shop. Oh, I'm just going to show the board there what's on tonight. Fireworks from 8pm and midnight. Now this coffee shop here is open at 8am through till 2pm I believe. Seven days a week. fish and chippy shop next door it opens at 11 a.m. Now if we head up this way a little bit we well, can see the cars going across up the end there if you cross the road there and walk about another 100 150 meters there's actually a G-Rail tram stop so if you've come down from Brisbane you don't want to bring the car or you're coming up from the southern end of the Gold Coast come up on the G-Rail train Get off there, short walk, and you're in the Broadwater Parklands. Pan around here, and you've got the main park area, the stage set up. These poles are here, are sensor ones. You see the lights flashing up and down them, a little bit hard to see. You walk past them and they sort of go blue, blue. It's a really weird sound. If you don't know what it is, it sort of freaks you out. Swamp hens and bin chickens. Now I've been told by a reliable source that they are really good eating. You catch them, put them in the pot with a couple of rocks, boil the hell out of the water, throw the bin chicken out and eat the rock. Another toilet block and changing room. And we'll head back down onto the main path along the waterfront. Now we get into the area that the kids will really love. Big Wedgie was good, but wait till you see this. Massive um, closed off swimming area, and down in the distance, oh, I'm just going to pan around a little bit. Helicopter flying out. Down in the distance, huge inflatable playland. We'll head around there now. Over on my right under that coloured sail there's a big inflatable jumping mat but again there's a lot of little kitties in there so I'm not going to film that. You've got metal rails here and there's like bicycles that you ride around on the rails. Closer and closer to the inflatable playland. A couple of guys over in the right in the centre at the corner there trying to tip a big inflatable thing over. Jonathan Livingston Seagull, he says to say hi. A 
pricing is really quite reasonable for this. I'm not too sure how long the session is. Probably half an hour or something. Or maybe an hour. Now the coffee barrel is open from 6am until 4pm, 7 days a week. Now something I should add is if you have kids or grandkids that come to the park with you and they're into Pokemon Go, this area down here is absolutely crazy with gyms, Pokestops, they just pop up everywhere. So that's just something to keep in mind if you have kids with you and they really like Pokemon Go. This is where they have their annual Anzac service every year. They have a really big turnout for that. Show you a little bit more of the water slides in this water park here, just from a different angle. There's about three or four slides and you can see them all from this angle. A little bit windy, so I apologise for I want to go too! <laughs> If you get tired of the park or you want to go get something more substantial for lunch, directly across the road you have Australia Fair Shopping Centre. They have a food court, there's all other various food venues around the area there. Okay, so we'll keep heading south. This is the last third of the Broadwater Parkland. Oh, a few more jet skis heading out. This is there, about 8, 10, 12. Two helicopters heading out there as well. Gold Coast famous girl on the hill. We've gone all the way, all the way from this end up here, and we are now down here. Now right down on the southern end of the park, we have a bit of a sideshow alley set up. I believe it's only through until about the 18th or 19th of January, but I should be able to double check that when I get around the corner here. Okay, here we go. From the Boxing Day through to the 15th of January, from 6pm to 9.30 nightly. But not tonight, New Year's Eve, it's from 4pm till midnight. Now there's also two lots of fireworks. There's a petting zoo in there. I believe the fireworks are 8, yes, 8 p.m. at midnight. Entry $3 or 4 for $10. Considering what you normally pay at a normal sideshow, it's very cheap. Well, I'll cut it off there. Anyway, from Selena and I, we wish everybody a happy new year and I hope it's a safe one for you all. See you later. Bye.